Good morning, everybody. Can we all stand, please? Welcome to NTA 2 In. This is the place where nobody stands alone. And we are so grateful that you all are here. Anyone come to lift up the name of Jesus this morning? Amen. So we're just going to open up our service, sending greetings to all of our online viewers. Hope that you're enjoying from home and we want to see you in here soon as well. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for another opportunity, Father, that we can come in your presence, Father. We thank you for another opportunity where we can give you praise, where we can give you glory, where we can give you honor. Father, we just ask right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, that you will just take full control of this service, Father. Father, we ask, Father, that, Father, as people come in, Father, that souls will be touched, souls will be blessed, Father, and that people will be saved, healed, and delivered, Father. We thank you, Father, even in advance, because, Father, we know you shall do marvelous things in this our service today, Father. So, Father, we thank you for each and every person involved, from the ushers to the worship team to the speaker father and we ask that you'll touch them afresh anoint the word as the man of God brings it father may he speak with clarity father and may he hear you in a supernatural way father we pray we thank you and we give you all the praise all the glory and all the honor in Jesus name we pray come on let's just begin to clap our hands and give God a praise praise the Lord should we praise the Lord come on let's continue to praise the Lord hallelujah we're going to welcome the Holy Spirit in this place this morning. Hallelujah.
Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. Let's welcome the Holy Spirit. Let's welcome the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit should already be within us. So all we have to do is acknowledge him. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, we give you the glory, Lord. We give you the glory, Lord. Let's just lift our hands to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. For he is worthy. For he is worthy. For he is worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. We're going to take it up a bit, guys. We're going to really exalt the name of the Lord. Amen. We're going to exalt the name of the Lord and really confess with our lips and our hearts that we believe. Amen. That we believe in you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to see a, I'm going to need to see a two-step today, guys, with you. Yeah, I need a two-step for you guys, yeah? Jehovah, you. Yes, I trust in you. Oh, Lord, Jehovah, you. I trust in you. Yes, Lord.
Some of you who do not know me, my name is Reverend Richard, and I belong to this church. Well, first of all, I want to thank God. <laughs> I want to give glory to God because three weeks, my joy, my joy is overwhelmed. I am so joyful. You know, the Lord has blessed me immensely. The Lord has blessed me so much that I'm here to proclaim the glory, the anointing, the worship of God. Because three weeks ago, three, three weeks ago, I stand up here and was blessed. After I thought, I will not want to get married. But God said, no, it is not good for a man to live alone. So he blessed me. And three weeks ago, stand up, Mrs. Martin. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to thank you, all this church, all the members for your prayer, your support, uh, your blessing. I really, we are, me and my wife, we are really, really grateful, you know, for, for you. Thank you so much from the bottom of our heart. We thank you and we appreciate you. And this is just the start. I know the invitation already coming for dinner, but I, we will come. We will come. But I want to see my wife cooking first. 
Okay. <laughs> Once I taste that, then we will accept all the invitation. And when I say my blessing is overwhelmed, here I am again, standing here to christen my grandchild. <laughs> One of the blessings of the Bible is that you will see your children's children. And that is a blessing. So I'm here, full of joy and full of blessing. After marriage, now God bless me to christen my own grandchild. God is good. So I want to encourage you. Don't give up on God. Whatever you need, whatever your situation, take it to God in prayer. And do not doubt because God is who he say he is. He never changed. And if he say we bless you, he will bless you. Amen? Right, so uh, you all know I'm a man of few words. <laughs> Let me get on. Let me get on with what I need to do. <laughs> okay? We're here this morning to dedicate Asriel, Lucas, Adeniyi, Martin, Stanislaus. So, please, can, you, can I invite the parents and the godparents to come forward, please? Please give them a hand. <coughs> we have Natalie, Chantel, Keji, Ify, Perry, and Bochim. Everybody here? Ah, here you go. Here's my man. <laughs> right. Thank you all for coming. This is a blessing to me, as I said before. It is such a blessing, and I'm so happy to be dedicating my own grandchild. So you can tell that I will teach him. If the parent doesn't, I will. I will teach the parent, and then I will teach the child to make sure they hear in the house of God, and to make sure that he attend his Sunday school. Is that okay? <laughs> I, I've got I've got two, three other grandchildren that they actually christening right here in that church. Please, Ture, stand up. This is my first grandson. Ture, please stand. <laughs> Navana, please stand. <laughs> Caleb, please stand. <laughs> they all christening right here in this church. So you can see I'm a very happy, joyful person because the Lord has done so much for me and I cannot step back now. I have to always go forward and always be with the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. So we're here this morning to dedicate Israel to the Lord. So, the Bible told us in the book of Mark, that people were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch. But the disciples rebuked them. And when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as this. And he said, I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. What he meant is that you need to have a childlike mind to be able to accept God into your life. That means you have to surrender everything. You have to depend completely on God, just like a child completely depends upon their parent. And that is how we can enter the children of God. So he took the children in his arm and put his arm on them and bled them. Amen. So, parents, I'm going to have a, I'm going to, you're going to have a charge and I want you to say, we will. And I want you to say it loud so that everybody here, okay? Throughout all the ages, godly parents have presented their children to the Lord in dedication. Anton and Vanessa, you follow a noble heritage in presenting Asriel to the Lord. 
you enter into a solemn relationship with God who keeps his covenant to a thousand generations. Believing that Israel is a gift from God and that he shall hold you accountable for him. Do you now solemnly confess that it is your purpose to dedicate this child to the Lord and to his service? Will you pray with him? Why are you quiet? Will you instruct him faithfully in the doctrine of the Christian faith? Will you teach him to read the word of God, to pray and to lead a holy life? You, will you take Ashraf faithfully to the house of worship to attend his service and do all that is in your power to bring Ashraf to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Savior and the Lord? God parents, you have a responsibility as a God parent. You are just like parents. They trusted you. That is why they choose you as a God parent. So you step in as a parent. And I want to tell, I want to ask you, and I want you to re, uh, uh, reply to me or answer me that you will, but let it come from your heart. Don't just say it from your lips, okay? God parents, we would take Israel as your own child and nurture him and train him in good way of God life. Will you correct him when he make mistake and will you tell him off but gently and bring him to the glory of God? Israel, Lucas, Adeniyi, Martin, Stanislaus, I dedicate you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May your young life be nurtured and matured under the gracious influence of the Holy Spirit. May God protect you physically and deliver you from temptation. May, the, may you highly call you into the kingdom and untimely into his service, using you to advance his glory and to hasten the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can we all stand, please? And please with me, with your mind, let us unite together in this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, here I dedicate Asherah to your Holy Spirit, asking you to bless him, asking you to protect him, asking you to guide him, in every day of his life, protect him when he's in the nursery, protect him when he's in primary, protect him when he's in secondary, bless him and guide him when he's in university. Let him be a mighty child, an obedient child, a child, oh Lord, that we, you use in your kingdom, a child, oh Lord, of success. We pray in the name of Jesus that every step he take, you be there to guide him. Every step he take, you be there to protect him. Protect him from evil, protect him from danger, protect him from bad company. Let him be a light that shines in the darkness. Let him be an example to all his friends to see. Bless him as he's coming in and bless him as he's going out. Protect him from evil and from danger. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Parent, our Lord, in the name of Jesus, I lift up Asher, parent, into thy holy hand as I'm asking you, oh Lord Almighty God, to bless them with wisdom to bless them with knowledge and to bless them with more understanding. 
give them that inclination, O oh Lord Almighty God, to depend completely on you. Let them know that you care for them. Protect for the, the, all the resources they need. In the name of Jesus, guide every step they take. Protect their house. Protect their being. In the name of Jesus, I lift them up right now into thy holy hand that you will bless them, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up the, of the God parent, O oh Lord, into thy holy hand. As I'm asking you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to bless them as they're coming in. Bless them as they're going out. Bless them every day of their life. Protect them from evil. Protect them from danger. In the name of Jesus, send your guiding angel to wrap around them so that they will know that you care for them. Let them be, O oh Lord, Almighty oh Father God. A child, oh Lord, that they will know you led to them. They will bring more people to your kingdom. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, I pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. A quick guidance for the for the Godparent. So, being a Godparent is not just for the occasion, and it's just not to, for the nappies, and it's just not to take Astray out just for the day. So when the bank opens tomorrow, you go and open a little account book and make it direct debit so you don't forget. You know, by the time Astrid is 16, you don't have to be worried what you have to give to him. You just give him the card. By that time, he will know how to tap it himself or go to the ATM. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you very much, Astrid. Give them a hand. Thank you so much. Give them a hand again as they go in. Thank you. Once again, put our hands together and let's celebrate this beautiful family. Come on, let's put our hands together. Amen. Amen. We can see a new spring in the step of our Reverend Richard, the newly married man, and Mrs. Martins. Can we please celebrate them one more time? Amen. Amen. And to Brother Anton, Sister Vanessa, God bless you, and, and baby Asbury. One more time, let's please celebrate them at this time. Amen. God bless you. In the the theme of celebration, amen. I just want us to stand at this time. Let's stand together, church. Let's stand together, amen. I just hear this song ringing in the atmosphere. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord thank you, Lord, Lord that, that you, you ever thought of me. Many are the blessings, many, many are the blessings that, that you give unto me. Blessings overflowing like a mighty sea. Lord, I want to thank you. For your love to me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank, thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, I wanna thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anyone wanna thank the Lord today? Thank you, Lord. Thank you,
got something to thank the Lord for. Come with us through your lips. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for thank you for protecting me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody know that if it wasn't for God who was in your life, you wouldn't be here today? Thank Him! Thank Him for His grace! Thank Him for His mercy! It could have been different! Thank you, Lord! Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, God bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I said God is a good God. I said God is a great God. I said God is a mighty God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Amen. You may take your seats. You may take your seats. God bless you. Amen. We just give God thanks. We are together again. And the song says, just praising the Lord. Amen. We thank God for his blessing, his mercy. You are so welcome today. I know Reverend Richard already gave the welcome. But I just want to just once again welcome you all to the house of the Lord today. Amen. We've had a wonderful start to our service. We've dedicated baby Azrael. And we're going to continue um, in our worship. At this time, we're going to have um, our weekly notices, some important um, notices to get to. So please listen carefully and keep your eyes on the screen. Amen. And then I'm going to come back before you as we collect our morning's tithes and offering. God bless you in Jesus' name. Good afternoon, church. Here are today's notices. Mark your diary for Saturday the 4th of May 2024 for the formal induction of Pastor Andrew E. Wignall as Senior Pastor of NTA Tooting. Members and friends are kindly asked to be seated at 2.45pm for the service of installation, which will commence promptly at 3pm. Don't miss this historic moment in the life of our church here at NTA Tooting. Choir rehearsals for Pastor Andrew's installation service will be held today, after church and also next Sunday the 21st of April at 1.30 p.m. until 3 p.m. Please see Sister Kyla Fleming to sign up if you wish to join the choir. Choir members must attend both choir rehearsals today and also next week in order to sing at the service. A life without prayer is a life without power. Tuesday night prayer will be on Zoom at 7 p.m. All are welcome. Please also join us for early morning prayer on Wednesdays at 6am on YouTube. And then if you're in the area during lunchtime on Wednesdays, please join us for our midday prayer and fasting at the sanctuary at 12 noon. Later on this week, on Thursday, the 18th of April, from 2pm until 6pm, here at the sanctuary will be the recall conference of Healing Our Broken Village, entitled Enough is Enough. It will be exploring mental health inequalities and the black community in southwest London. Please take note of this flyer for the registration details. Last but not least, on Sunday, the 25th of May, from 9am to 11am, will be our prayer breakfast with a Caribbean twist, hosted by the care team. The speaker will be Sister Cadian Wedderburn. Tickets cost £10 for adults and children under 12. Tickets cost £5. Please see Sister Hyacinth Hendricks, Sister Pauline Robinson, or Sister Vivia Parker Rose to purchase your ticket. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for our notices. Please continue to keep them in mind. Um, we are now coming to offering time. Offering time is? Oh, maybe somebody doesn't want to be blessed this morning. Offering time is? Yeah, let's put some oomph into that. We give God thanks for what God has given us and it's a privilege to give back a portion unto him. And so if you're here for the very first time, this is a part of our worship and we know that God has blessed us with our jobs and our finances and so we want to give back a small portion to him to further his work here on earth. And the Bible says if you give, he will bless you. Give and it will come back to you. Press down, shake it together and running over. And so we pray for that increase in your life then. So whatever you have, however small it is, however big it is, I want you to give that as a sacrifice to the Lord today. We can give in a few different ways. We can give physically. Our ushers are in the aisles. They have envelopes. You want to give physically, you can do so. We also have card machines also. Um, you can go to the back and one um, of our church members will be able to assist you with that. And then we can also give online. In the moment, we're going to look at the screen and look at the ways that we're able to give. Um, but while you're getting that ready, let's put our eyes on the screen at this time and let's see how we can give electronically. And then we'll bless our morning's offering.
Giving to the New Testament Assembly Tooting couldn't be easier with Tithely. To get started, you can visit our website at www.ntatooting.org.uk forward slash give and follow the on-screen instructions or text give to plus four four one one seven three two five four four two zero. You will receive a reply linking you to the setup page. Securely enter your information and you're all set up. Now you're ready to give anywhere at any time. Just enter the amount and you'll receive a confirmation text and an email with your receipt. If you make a mistake, no problem. Just text refund in the reply. Giving with Tybly is the simplest way to give to NTA Tutin. Thank you for your contribution. Amen. Can I invite a congregation to stand at this time? Let's stand together as we bless this morning's offering. If you have your offering in your hands, whether it's physical, whether you've got your cards or your phones, just raise them up to the Lord as we pray. Gracious and loving Father, we thank you for the gifts that you've given to us and all good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. And so we thank you for your love. Today, Lord, as your children are going to stretch forth their hands to give to you, we pray that you'll bless them in a special way. We pray that their store bars shall never be empty. And for those who are going through financial hardships, we pray that you'll provide for them, Lord, and continue, oh God, to, Lord, give them gifts so that they can once again give to you, Father God. Bless our offering, Lord, may it do good for your service here on earth. May it further your kingdom as we build it step by step, brick by brick, and soul by soul. We ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Please, as you come forward, please follow the direction of the ushers who will lead you to come forward to give. Come sing and come over dance in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We just sang, thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of me. We're going to continue to give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good.
For he is worthy. So we give thanks. For he is good. For he is worthy. He's worthy. For he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy. Hallelujah, let's give thanks unto the Lord. Hallelujah, He is good all the time. Hallelujah, all the time He is good. Hallelujah. Give him a praise. Clap your hands and give him a praise in the house. Amen. He is good and his mercy is enduring forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody really grateful to be once again in the house of the Lord today? Amen. I, I never see saying so. You know, we gathered here last week and it was no guarantee we're going to be back again this week. But God has been faithful to us. Amen. God bless you today. Amen. And just for a few moments, um, I just want to share with you what um, the Lord has laid on my heart for the church today. We thank God we are still in this season coming out of Easter. And I give God praise because I understand that because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Uh, or maybe about two or three people agree with me. Because he lives, all my fears have gone. And because I know he holds the future my life is worth a living just because he lives church of god we could talk about the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus christ every single week of every single month of every single year because it is the power of god unto salvation and it's the reason for our existence, the reason why we live, it's the reason we move and have our being because Jesus sacrificed his life for us and he gave us a new life. And so today, as we're in the house of the Lord, some of you are here for the first time and you're so welcome. And I pray that in these next few moments that you will, just like the title is about to share with us, that you have an encounter with the risen Christ. Somebody say encounter. Some, turn to somebody and say encounter encounter amen we praise God and we give him glory and we give him honor for what he has done amen and so we at this time as we locate ourselves in this time of history last week um, I shared with you amen a word and so now what what do we now do that Jesus has now raised and um, we're gonna go to a different narrative today I'm on the same theme we're gonna go on a different narrative where after Jesus was resurrected two of the 70 disciples. Now we need to understand that there were 12 disciples as many of us know, many of us know about the 12. But we know that there were also many, many more disciples and some of them uh, decided to depart because what was asked of them, they felt was too hard for them to sacrifice. And so the numbers dwindled. But we know that in the midst of the many, there were 12, but there also were 70. And there were two disciples, one was called Cleopas, the other one, we don't know the name in this narrative, in Luke chapter 24, and that's where we're going to locate um, our message today, in Luke 24. Cleopas and one that we don't know the name of, some actually say that this was Luke himself, and because he was given an account about himself and other disciples, he didn't give his name, that's what some theologians say. But as we look at St. Luke 24, there is a journey that two disciples are on, and I'm going to take us on a journey this morning. And I pray on this journey that we will once again have an encounter with the risen Christ. I want to let you into a little secret that just because that we give our lives to Jesus and we're saved and we're on our way to heaven, uh, just because we've met Jesus once doesn't mean that it is a date that we put on our mantelpiece on the calendar and say, I met Jesus in 1979. I met Jesus in 1990. I met him in 2002. Every single day we need to once again meet Jesus. Jesus needs to be someone that we are acquainted with, someone that we know, and someone we have a relationship 
with. And so this Encounters Day, I've titled A Real Encounter with the risen Christ. And the word encounter is an unexpected meeting with someone or something. And there are a few um, things that I believe that we need to do if we want to experience and really see the risen Christ. I'm going to just read the narrative in your hearing from verse 13 of Luke 24. And I want you, when you hear it read, I want you to even if you want to close your eyes or you can keep your eyes open. I really want you to find yourself in his narrative and really see the disciples, see Jesus, see the interaction because I believe that Lord wants to reveal something to us in a very special way. Luke 24 verse 13. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. They did not recognize him. Verse 17, he he asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk? They stood still. Their faces were downcast. They were sad. Amen. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? In other words, where have you been? One of the greatest, most serious, most most unbelievable crucifixions has taken place. And you're here talking like you don't know what's going on. Where have you been? They then answered what things he asked. Jesus then said in verse 19, and then they said to Jesus, about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. Verse 20, the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Verse 24. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. Can someone say amen to his word? We're going to pause it right there. Hallelujah. And so the very first thing that I want to present to you about how in order that we can really see and experience risen Christ. Remember. Their eyes were held from recognizing him. So this wasn't just natural. They were actually held from seeing. The spirit of God actually allowed them to not be able to recognize it was Jesus. And I'm going to go somewhere. I'm going to tell you why I believe that was the case. But the first thing that they were engaged in, they were expressing exactly how they felt about what was taking place. And so the very first thing that I understand that we need, when we learn from this chapter, what we need to adopt in our disposition, if we're going to really discern and understand who Jesus really really is, we must acknowledge exactly where things are and exactly where we stand. They spoke about how they felt. Their, Their hearts were saddened. They saw him be crucified. They expressed their sadness and despair regarding Jesus' crucifixion and their doubts as to his resurrection. And we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago about this idea of, you know, them believing, but perhaps not really expecting. And now they found themselves, their master had been crucified and they were not sure what had happened to him, but they expressed their grief. Can I present to you, church, that it doesn't matter how low you might feel or how angry you might feel about situation or how depressed or distressed you might be. God is big enough to take your emotions. I need to understand this because sometimes the easiest thing to do when we are going through difficult times is to isolate ourselves from God because we believe that we we have gone too far. We've said too much for God to really understand and love us. But I want you to understand We serve a God who is touched with the feelings of our infirmities and our griefs and our sadness. And I've come to encourage someone today who maybe feel like their anger is at a place that is out of off the scale. You're angry to a point where nobody understands exactly how angry you are and how sad you are and you don't know how you're going to get out of this prison. I want to tell you today that the risen Christ rose for you and he rose to take your distress and your sadness 
and he rose to take your depression and the things that try to weigh you down. Sometimes you're so low and nobody around knows you. You're smiling, but inside you are broken. I tell you the reason Christ rose with power and healing in his wings to take your sadness. Hallelujah. And so they didn't know Cleopas and the unnamed disciple. They didn't know who they were talking to. But they spoke about how sad and how grieved they were that Jesus, ironically, the man that they were speaking to, had been crucified. They were able to tell him about their distress. So today I tell you it is important that we tell Jesus all about our struggles. There's an old song that says, he will guide until the day is done. There is no one, there is no friend like Jesus. Amen. And so we need to tell Jesus all about it. And as you heard in the narrative, they went into detail about how he was crucified and that he said on the third day that he was going to rise. But they then went on to say, there were some women. Someone say women. Oh, you're saying it like you're weak. Say women. Oh, you wonder what I'm gonna go, where I'm going to go next. Well, I thank God for women. And if you don't want to thank God, I thank God for women. I thank God, first and foremost, that I have the best woman in my life who's sitting right over here. And I give God thanks for women. I give God thanks for my, my mom. I give God thanks for my sisters and all the wonderful women that I know in my life, the women of this church. We, I, I thank God for you. And I'm going somewhere because this is really, really, really interesting. Because as the disciples are talking to Jesus, who they don't know is Jesus, they say that some women went down to the tomb and they found out early in the morning that Jesus wasn't there. They came back and they told us. Then it says in verse 24, then some of our companions, male companions, went to the tomb and found it just as women had said, but they did not see Jesus. Something tells me that some of the men didn't truly believe what the women had said. The women were the first ones who got to the tomb. Church, I said the women were the first ones that got to the tomb. If I don't hear anyone, I should hear the women this morning. I said the women were the first ones that got down to the tomb. And when they went there, the angel was already waiting for them and said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? Jesus has been resurrected. The women ran back to the disciples and said to them, Jesus has been resurrected. I believe some of them heard the words. Some of them may have resonated. But for themselves, some had to run back to the tomb to see for themselves. Today, I want to give you an encouragement, but also a charge. Sometimes we stand in the way of our blessing because we do not validate when God has spoken to someone and God has revealed to someone, but because it doesn't come in the way you expect it to come, you start to disbelieve the word of the Lord. It can stand in the way of your breakthrough. It can stand in the way of your deliverance. When God speaks, whoever he speaks through, you better open your heart and receive the word that God has to give you. Because when God gives you a word, he comes to change your life. So it may not be women in your life. It might be a voice that you don't expect to hear. But I want you to make sure you stay in the spirit. That when God is speaking, you hear him. Oh, glory to God. The risen Christ had it such that it was the women who were the first ones to be there. And they carried the message. Hallelujah. They received the blessing. And those who may have doubted, you don't understand this. When you doubt and you don't receive it, you're the one that's left without the blessing. The women have gone on their way rejoicing, receiving what they need. But the skeptics are coming to run behind. I wonder if it's true. In the name of Jesus, open your heart and receive the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I, at this moment, I feel, I feel it's important to make this declaration. There's so much debate about women's place in ministry. In many churches, they have different theologies, different doctrines about whether women should be in ministry. Well, let me tell you this. I read the Bible. I read it for myself. I see the Bible clearly. And I understand that Jesus said through the prophet, hallelujah, through the word of God, that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. He says, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Which means there is no gender elevation when it comes to God. There are positions that we hold, but God will anoint who he wants to anoint. And he will use whoever he wants to use to bring about his work. I want to tell you this. If the women of this church one day decided to pick up their bags and said, I'm going down the road to Tootin Broadway. I'm picking up my bag and I'm coming where you are. Because if God can use you, God can use me. And we are one in Christ Jesus. The risen Christ rose for males and females. The risen Christ came to empower males and females to change all of our lives. And I know why the enemy's trying to mess with this mic today because I'm firing some bullets to the enemy today. We'll use who he wants to use and he will get the glory. I love that actually in the scripture, the disciples actually say, the, the, the phrase they use is, some of the women amazed us. This is actually in the NIV. What a statement. They amazed us. They came, they told us, they amazed us. And as I said, some of the men then went to run to see what had taken place. But what I love is that they came, and it says in scripture, that they went to the tomb, these, these are the men that went, and, they, and the disciples said, the ones who went there did not see Jesus. Well, duh. <laughs> duh. You're not going to see Jesus. Why seek the living amongst the dead? So they were going to see Jesus. How sad. Jesus said, I will rise again. Jesus said, after three days, I will rise again. And so my question is, why were they expecting to see Jesus at the tomb? Hmm. Again, once again, it is important in our own lives. What can we learn from this narrative? Hmm. We need to understand that when God has delivered when God has done what he said he's going to do, when God has stayed true to his word, when he has already taken your situation from the grave and he has now raised it again to new life. Some of us, because we're so used to the dead situation, when God has brought resurrection, we're still going back to the tomb because the tomb is like a crutch. You're used to the tomb. You're used to the smell, Jesus have mercy. You're used to the decay, but yet God has resurrected you from the pits of the tomb. In the name of Jesus, I've come to speak to someone today. Prophetically, take up yourself. Take up your bed. Leave the tomb. Jesus has risen. And you have risen. Don't let nobody take you back to the tomb. Some people are good at doing that. Remind you of what was. <laughs> what was yesterday. Who you were last week. Who you were last year. Let me tell you. 
because Jesus rose, your past is the past. Because Jesus rose, your future is the future. Because Jesus rose, your life will never be the same again. Hey, glory to God. A real encounter with the risen Christ. Hallelujah. And so the narrative continues. Hallelujah. If in verse 25 of St. Luke 24. And it's amazing because this is where Jesus now begins to speak. And so I want to present to you that another way that we can ensure that we truly sustain an encounter with the risen Christ is that number one, the main voice that we hear is the voice of Jesus. Hear him speak, take heed to his words through understanding his word. And I love how it comes alive, the word comes alive as Jesus begins to speak to them. Verse 25, he said to them, after they've, exp they've expressed everything, they've expressed their despair, what's happened. They've gone to the tomb, they haven't seen Jesus. They, they, they're downcast and depressed. <laughs> Jesus says to them, he uses very, very strong language. How foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah, the Christ, have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And in verse 27 says, I love this. Jesus began to preach a sermon. It says, here, and beginning with Moses and the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Ah. There is no way that you will encounter, really encounter Christ, if you don't encounter his word. It is his word that he reveals himself through. Imagine Jesus, the God-man, is with them. They don't know he's with them. I just love this image. He's there. And then he speaks to them. And he speaks about what the scriptures are saying about him. So you've got the word that became flesh in front of them. He's now breaking the word, the written word to them. Ah, Jesus, who is the word incarnate, the Logos, is now breaking the written word about himself to them. And so they are receiving the word in, a, I would say, a double concentration. The man speaking to him, to them, and the word is speaking to them. And he's letting them know that everything that Moses and the prophet said about me has come to pass. Christ is the anointed one. And if you notice, the word here is used, Messiah. And Messiah means anointed one. And I always, I've said this before, sometimes we use that word anointed like it's on tap. Everybody is using the word anointed. I'm anointed for this. I'm anointed for that. I'm anointed for this. Well, my question is, who anointed you? Because what my Bible tells me is that when there is anointing, the anointing must come from God. Anointed means where you are set apart for a particular task or a function. And it's really important. And when I talk about anointing now, yes, God will give his order in his church. And so there are times that the word of God says, that we as leaders and as ministers will take the oil as a representation of the Spirit of God. And we will anoint you with oil. But it's not us anointing you. It's us standing in the gap as a point of contact. It is God who gives the gift and does the anointing. No person has the power to anoint you. It is the Spirit of God. And it is through his vessels that he will administer anointing. But I'm going somewhere because Jesus is the anointed one. Jesus is the ultimate anointed one. He was anointed to come, to dwell with us, to come on earth. He was anointed, particularly was anointed for the purpose and the mission that he came to, which was to save humankind for the glory of God. That was the task he came for. And so it's important to understand that when Jesus the Messiah 
was speaking to them about who he was. He was letting them know that although, and I pray somebody catches this, although Moses and the prophets were speaking about me, I am anointed to be the prophet of the prophets. I am anointed to be the priest of the priests. I've been anointed to be the king of kings because he was anointed to be prophet, priest, and king. There is no one like Jesus. And Jesus is the first fruits. Jesus is the forerunner. Jesus is the one that we pattern ourselves after. So he not only speaks the word, he is the word. And he is the word that settles every other word. He is the priest that intercedes for every other priest. And he is the king that every king I don't know what's happening to this mic today. That old dragon, in the name of Jesus, Jesus is king above all. And I will shout it so that Beck and Broadway can hear me today. He is the king of all kings. He is the Lord of all lords. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he will break every chain. He's the anointed one that brings change and transformation. He is, he is, he is, he is, he is. Mm. Hallelujah. And so, as I bring to, as I begin to come into landing, we see the narrative, we're moving. Jesus breaks the word to them. Ah, and as he breaks the word to them and lets them know about who he is, they still haven't recognized him yet. But something is going on, on the inside. And the word of God tells us in verse 29, they're walking together, as you know. Ah, and it looks as if Jesus was going to go a bit further on from them. But they urged him in verse 29 not to go. And they said, stay with us. Because it is almost evening and the day has just about ended. So he went inside to stay with them. Hallelujah. And it's so important if that we're going to have a real encounter with Christ. We need to be at a place where we are not prepared to go anywhere without Jesus with us. Now some people said amen. But I need you to understand. This is has got to be the foundation status of your heart. I will not go anywhere if Jesus is not with me. They urged him to stay. Remember, they didn't even know it was Jesus, but they knew. And I know what I'm saying when I say, but they knew. There was something about the authority in this man. When he spoke about the scriptures, they realized there was something special about him. And they said, please, please stay with us. My God, my God. Sometimes when we hear the word desperation, we think that it's only for those who are at the end of the line. And it's the undignified who are desperate. You see, when you're desperate for something, it means there is nothing that will stand in your way to get the thing that you need. You know that your life cannot be lived the way you need to unless you have that thing. When you're desperate, you'll move everything out of the way to get the thing that you need. I, brothers and sisters, I want to suggest to you that desperation is not for the undignified. Desperation in the spirit is for those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Desperation is for those who want to fulfill God's will for their life. Desperation means just like when Jacob was wrestling, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Desperation is for those who know that without Jesus they are nothing. 
Desperation is for those who know they cannot take a step unless Jesus orders their step. Hallelujah. There was something about Jesus, something about the way he spoke that made them say, please stay with us, stay with us. The day's far spent. Ah, and the Bible tells us in the last part of the narrative, in verse 30, and it happened that as he reclined, as he reclined at the table with them, the Bible says he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he began to give it to them. Thank you, Lord God. Now this image of Jesus breaking the bread, it's not the first time we've seen this image. We know that Jesus broke bread a few days earlier listen carefully a few days earlier at the last supper before the crucifixion Jesus broke bread when he sat with them and this time when he got to the home it says that when he took the bread and he broke it their eyes were suddenly open and they recognized him and at that moment he then vanished from their sight you see, so I just want to take us somewhere quickly before I bring this to land. Why do I think, or why do we believe maybe, that their eyes were held back from recognizing who Jesus was from the very beginning? I believe that the risen Christ was trying to let them know, and even us today, you don't need to see me to believe me. You don't need to see me to trust me you don't need to see me to understand my word everything that I have done and I'm doing is enough evidence for in the power of the risen Savior and so even as I was thinking about this image of the bread the Holy Spirit began to speak to me now it says that Jesus himself took the bread and blessed it. Isn't it interesting? Hey, they went, Jesus went to their home. They took him to their home. That means Jesus was a guest in their home. But it was Jesus who took the bread, blessed it, and gave it to them. He was doing something really important. And he was letting them know a very important truth. He was letting them know that you are seeing me now, but you don't understand that the bread I'm breaking to you, I am the bread of life. And you can't break bread to me. I have to break bread for you because I am the bread of life. In fact, I am the resurrection and I am the life. And it's interesting because it said that Jesus broke the bread uh, and he gave it to them. But you know, sometimes Jesus blessed the bread first, as we know. So Jesus has provided what they needed. Jesus provides what we need, bringing it to the 21st century. He's provided what we need. And then Jesus blessed it and then he broke the bread. But you know, I'm about to administer this to Brother Jonathan. But Brother Nathaniel, come here right now. Brother Jonathan, you go here. Sometimes the Holy Spirit showed me when Jesus blesses the bread and we are praying to God about something to receive from him. If we are not careful, based on our old mindsets and our old beliefs and our old thing, ways of thinking and where we've been held for some time in a particular place, Jesus blessed the bread, but then we sometimes then try to intercept and think that the bread can only be given, I'm going somewhere, by somebody else to us. So Jesus blessed the bread. He's about to give us the bread, but because we're held bound sometimes in our minds and people trying to control the things that we do, I wanna give Jonathan the bread, but Jonathan believes that this time that brother Nathaniel actually is the person right now who probably should authorize this bread because guess what? 
the place that Nathaniel has in my life or in Jonathan's life at this moment, maybe is one whereby there is a relationship. But then perhaps it could be that because of past experiences, it might mean that in terms of his place in my life, it's a familiar, it's understanding. What Jesus is doing for me, I don't fully understand it all. And so I need something. Oh, I'm going somewhere. I need something that maybe is familiar. And so we then find that other people sometimes, if we're not careful, if we're not careful, that the bread that Jesus wants to give us, we sometimes are getting bread from somewhere else. Jesus authorizes the blessing. But sometimes because we are not obedient to waiting for what God is going to give to us, other people start to administer bread to us. Lord have mercy. When Jesus wants to give you the full amount of bread, somebody decides that you should get one little piece of bread. A little piece of healing. Because if you get a piece of healing, you'll always need to come back to me to top you up. A little piece of forgiveness so that when you get guilt again, you'll come back begging me once again. What can I do for you to make me feel better? When God wants to give you the fullness of the bread, other people are intercepting Jesus have mercy and they're taking authority that does not belong to them by the power of the spirit I've come by the power of the Holy Ghost to let you know that Jesus blesses the bread Jesus is the one that gives you the bread do not look to anybody else for bread do not look to anyone else to give you anything else Jesus has everything that you need The risen Christ has everything. Let them take their little piecemeal gift that they're giving to you. You don't need it. Jesus is the source of eternal life. Hey, Jesus. Sometimes people want to work in manipulation. Jesus. And witchcraft. Trying to hold people bound. But in the name of Jesus... The bread that Jesus gives is blessed and it gives life and it releases you from every prison that you find yourself in. Some people, you go through financial hardship and rather than waiting on God to provide for you, there are people with strings attached that want to give you something, but they give you just enough. So that when it runs out, you run right back to them. You're like a puppet on a string. I cut the tie in the name of Jesus. It's Jesus alone. Jesus alone. Everything you need is in him. No counterfeit bread in the name of Jesus. The bread of life is enough. In fact, the bread of life, when you eat of that bread, you will never be hungry. Again, sometimes the reason why we're so hungry for the things that seem to tickle our emotions is because we're not receiving the bread from the blessed one. Jesus, the bread of life. Today, I don't know who you are, I don't know where we are, but we can find ourselves in positions where if we don't keep our eyes, hey, on an encounter with the risen Christ, we will lose our way. But today I've come, just like the disciples' eyes were open. Today I pray the Spirit would open our eyes, that we'll see Christ in a new and a living way, and that we'll ensure that the bread that we receive is from God and God alone. And you know what? There are times that God will use other people to bless us. And that is completely okay. But remember who gave the blessing. (laughs) 
Nobody is a God except God. Nobody is your master except Jesus. And so today it's about, it's about an encounter with the risen Savior today. I'm going to ask the congregation please to stand at this time, even as we're in this attitude of worship. living word and today he wants us to have a real real encounter with him he is the resurrection and he's the life he can provide all your needs your healing your deliverance your breakthrough you might be here today and you don't even know the lord today you don't know him in a relation with him i want you to know that he loves you with an everlasting love and he wants to meet you today he's here in spirit I said, he's here. I said, he is here. And because he's here, he's here to meet your needs. And so today, you are here, you may have a need. I don't want you to look to the left or to the right. But from the time you know in your spirit, your eyes have been opened with a relation today about who Jesus is and about what he can do for you and about what he can do in your life. You might be saved, you might not know Christ. When I say you're not saved, it means that you've not made a decision to be in relationship with God. You've not given your life to him. You've not confessed to him your sins and received eternal life. Today, today, Jesus loves you and we want to pray with you. We want to stand by you. We want to we love you as Jesus loves you. And knowing that God can provide all of your needs. And so if today you are here and you need to be a special prayer, before we close our service, we want to pray with someone. I want the people of God to continue to pray and worship even in this atmosphere right now that God is setting for someone's breakthrough, for someone's deliverance, for someone's blessing. Jesus wants to bless. He's blessed the bread. Uh, he wants to break it for you and give it to you. Uh, anybody that stands in your way in the spirit is moved in the name of Jesus today so that you can receive that which God has for you. Good intentions sometimes is never, ever enough. Sometimes we have good intentions, but God himself is the one that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. And so today, if you're here and you need prayer, you may need that full bread of healing. Hey, you may need that full bread of deliverance. You may need that full bread of financial uh, breakthrough. You may need that full bread uh, of mental wellness. You may need that full bread uh, of peace. That's for us all understanding where you don't have to walk the streets in fear. You're not living in a situation where it's dog eat dog and ah, it's my life or their life. You need to know that your life is in God's hands and God will take care of you. Ah, you're living life knowing that, every, that any weapon that's formed against you shall not be able to prosper, but that you will be covered under the blood. Today, for a moment, we're gonna pray with you. I wanna pray with someone, I'm mean, minister here to pray with you. As the worship team begin to sing and hum that song, you are the living word. If you need prayer today, uh, the altar is open and just allow the Lord to minister to you. For the, those in the congregation who are not going to come forward, I want you to be, start to pray in your heart. I know that God is doing something. I know that God is revealing himself in a new way to someone today. And I believe that the word is taking root. And I pray that someone will leave this place not the same way that they came in the name of Jesus. The altar is open. Well, let us continue to pray and seek God as he continues to work in us. The risen Christ wants to make sure that he has an encounter with you today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Bread of heaven Sent down from glory Many things you are on earth A holy king A carpenter Gentle Redeemer, God with us, you're the living truth, and 
what a friend we have in you. You walk living in Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call our Savior. Were born in a manger. You were put on a tree. You died to save humanity. Humanity. You are the living word. So we sing, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. You're not just one that was hung on a tree, but you save humanity. Sing Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. So we can live. Say Jesus, Jesus. Say Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you.
our praise is your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you oh it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise. pour out it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise it's your breath in my lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out it's our praise. breath in our lungs
Jesus. Every time I keep messing up, I mess up every time. I'm lost without you, Jesus. Almighty God is doing a great work even now. And we are bringing our service to a close. But I know God is doing something, especially in the hearts of His people right now. There is an anointing for breakthrough. Even now, deliverance is even taking place, even now, right here. Not only at the altar, but also in, in the pews. God is doing something even on the balcony right down to the pew. Uh, God is doing something new. And for those of us who can discern in the spirit, we know that this is God's time. Hey. You might be here and wondering, uh, what might be taking place now, but I'm telling you that the real risen Christ is in the sanctuary today. And sometimes when he comes, he comes, he, he comes to mend, he comes to heal, he comes to break. At times you may cry, at times you may smile, at times you are overwhelmed. But one thing we know is that when the risen Christ is in the sanctuary, no life can remain the same. And I know that even now, I speak Jesus to every situation. I speak Jesus to every circumstance. I speak Jesus to every broken heart. I speak Jesus to every need. And I just want to just take these prayer requests before we bring our service to a close. God is still doing something. And I just want you to remain in the attitude of worship. This is God's time. And even when we close, if you need to remain in the presence of God, you do what you need to do. We never, ever, ever want to meet and we don't meet with Jesus. Mm. And he's doing a work even now. I'm telling you, God is doing something very deep amongst us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to pray for um, a sister Sharon, whose sister Lorraine is going into hospital for surgery in a few days' time. We want to keep her our prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. We also want to pray for our sister Judith Donegal, who uh, we know who has been unwell. We want to keep her in our prayers. We also have heard this week our sister Latoya Doyle, his aunt's husband, who died in a car crash on his way to work. And we know it was tragic circumstances. Uh, a burning took place and he died in Jamaica. But we even send right now comfort and healing to the family. Wherever they are all around the world, we pray for healing to their broken hearts at this time. We continue to stand in the gap for our sister Angel's granddaughter, Talia, who is still on life support. While there is life, there is hope. And we continue to trust Almighty God. God is the one that has the final say. And so God, we stand in agreement. Lord, you're able. We believe you, God. We believe you, God. 
We continue to also pray for our sister Phyllis Blythe, who is in the hospital. We pray that God's healing power will continue to minister to her right where she is. Amen. And we continue to pray for our evangelist Newman, who we thank God has been discharged from the hospital and is recovering at home. We continue to pray her full, full and complete healing in Jesus' name. Amen. And finally, we want to give God thanks for what he is doing in the lives of uh, amen many in our church and we want to give God thanks for our brother Sergey and our sister Uche who as many of you know um, are engaged to be married and we give God thanks for the blessing of love come on church we give God thanks for the blessing amen when it's come to that time when our brother Sergey and sister Uche along with our dear sister Rosalind will be traveling to Nigeria for the traditional ceremony and so we're gonna pray their covering and if they're in the house right now I'm gonna ask them to come forward we're gonna pray for them as they go on this important trip church do we stand with them church do we love them church does our hearts go with them hallelujah hallelujah amen and we just give God thanks. They're making their way down. But I need you to know that God is still doing something right now. Even in the hearts of his people. Ah, there is a shifting in this atmosphere. And God is doing something. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, God, God. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, deliverance, deliverance, deliverance. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Come on. Let's, let's give God praise for brother, brother Sir again, our sister Uche. Yes, 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 yes. I don't know if Sister Rosalind is here as well. I'm not sure if she's in the sanctuary. If she's not, she, she may be upstairs or etc. But we give God thanks. So can you stretch your hands, please, towards them? Amen. Amen. And even for others in the family and friends who also might be traveling, we also remember them even at this time in this prayer. But I want you to agree and decree with me even as I pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, as your daughter and son, as they take their travels, Father God, Lord, as Lord, as they go through this very first important ceremony, Lord, as Father God, that their love is sanctified, as their love, Father God, Lord, is solemnized. We pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you will bring them safely to their destination and that you'll cover each and every one of the proceedings that shall take place. Father God, we thank you for the gift of love. We thank you that, Lord, who you join together, no one can separate. And so we pray for a covering over them by the power of your spirit. Yes, God, provide for them. Be their shield and their buckler. Be, God, their ever-present help. And, Lord, we cover them under the blood in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Yes, God, we cover them. We cover them. We cover them. We cover them in the name of Jesus. And God, as a church family, we stand with them. We agree with them. We love them. And Father God, we bless them as they go forward in the mighty name of Jesus. And all of God's people shout aloud, amen and amen. And put your hands together and let's appreciate God for them. Time is far spent, and I'm going to bring um, our service to a close. Amen. We want to thank God for His leading today. Thank God for His move. Amen. We once again thank God for the Christian party. God bless you. We know there's another section to go, so I want to release us so we can um, move forward. We're just 10 minutes, just 10 minutes over time, so please don't crucify. Uh, but God has been moving. Amen. I said God has been moving, and God continues to move. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And so I just want to release you with the blessing. I know God is still doing something now. We're going to allow God to continue to move. But I'm going to dismiss us with the blessing. Amen. And we just stay in his statute of worship. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, love of God the Father, the full pleasure of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. 
Amen and amen. Please greet someone. It's lovely to have you. Greet someone. Smile at someone. Tell them it was great to see them in the house of God today. Amen. And go in the, with the presence of God. Go under his leading, under his move. Amen. And if you're still in the spirit, you remain where you are. But we love you and may God continue to bless and anoint you in Jesus' name. Thank you in Jesus' name.